Good morning, this is Dan Owen, and this is Passage Attack. Today we're going to deal with a, a passage from Hebrews, chapter 6, verses 4 through 8. This passage is kind of uh, controversial because it seems to talk about an unforgivable sin or uh, a condition where it's impossible to get back to God. <clears throat> so it's important that we understand the message here. And we're going to do this in three steps. First of all, we're going to see what the basic sentence actually is in this passage. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to look at what people are actually rejecting in this passage. And the third thing we're going to do is we're going to see why it is impossible for these people to come back to God. So let's start with the first part <clears throat> and let's look now at what the basic sentence is in this passage. Notice in verse 4 the writer says for it is impossible. And then if you drop down all the way to verse 6 we find out what is impossible. It is impossible to restore them again to repentance. Now that's kind of a sad sentence right there, but that is the basic elements of the sentence. It is impossible to restore them again to repentance. <clears throat> I know that you don't want to be in that situation, and I, don't, I know that I don't want to be in that situation. So now that we've seen the basic sentence that's here, let's talk about what these people are actually rejecting um, to put them in this situation. Notice he says, they've been enlightened, those who have once been enlightened. See, they've heard all about Christ. They've heard all about God's great redemptive plan in Christ. They've heard the gospel. They understand all that. They have tasted of the heavenly gift. He may mean salvation. He, he may mean the forgiveness of sins. I don't know, but they've already tasted of the heavenly gift. They have shared or become partakers in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has come to dwell in them. Um, they have tasted the goodness of the Word of God. They understand the goodness of God's grace and His mercy and all that that can belong to us in Christ. In the case of these people, they had tasted the powers of the age to come. Maybe they've uh, witnessed miracles or whatever. And in spite of all that, they have fallen away. See? Now how can you turn your back on all of that in there? See, that's, what, that's what's happened. They've turned their backs on all of that in there. And then, of course, we're back to our original sentence. For these people that have turned their backs on all that is in there, it is impossible to restore them to repentance. That's still kind of an owie, isn't it? I mean, that's a terrible situation for somebody to be in. So let's move to the third part of this discussion, which is why it is impossible to renew them to repentance. There's one little word here that's a key word, since. See, some translations would translate it because. So here's our sentence now. It is impossible to restore them again to repentance since... Well, since what? Since, since what condition is there? Well, since two things. They are crucifying again the Son of God to their own harm. Notice the present tense of that. They're rejecting Christ like those that crucified him. They are in the state of crucifying God or Jesus all over again. As long as they're in that state of rejecting Jesus and crucifying Jesus in their own minds, it is impossible to renew them uh, to repentance. Also, it says they are holding him to contempt. So why is it impossible to renew these people to repentance? He's saying as long as they keep crucifying Jesus all over again, as long as they keep holding Jesus in contempt, it is impossible to renew them. But what if they stop rejecting Jesus? What if they stop crucifying him all over again? What if they stop holding him in contempt? Then it's no longer impossible, is it? See, because the passage says it is impossible since they keep doing 
these two things that you see in verse 6. So then he explains by an illustration in the end of this passage, it's like a piece of land that drinks in all of the sunshine and rain and all of the wonderful things uh, that God has given people, you know. And uh, if it produces a crop, you know, it receives a blessing from God. But if that piece of land just bears thorns and thistles after God expends all his blessings on it, if it only bears weeds and thorns and thistles, then its end is to be burnt. See, this piece of land is like the people in this passage of Scripture. They've been enlightened. They've tasted of the heavenly gift. They've shared in the Holy Spirit. They've tasted the goodness of the Word of God. They've tasted the powers of the age to come. And all those blessings poured out on them, they just turn their back on God. See, that's like the land that drinks in all the blessings and doesn't produce a crop. So the bottom line of this is once we've accepted Jesus and heard the gospel and experienced all the blessings of, of God, let's don't find ourselves in the position that we turn our back on Jesus and we're rejecting Jesus and we hold Jesus in contempt and we maintain that position. Because if we get in that situation, as long as we're in that situation, it's impossible to be renewed under repentance. But if we'll turn back to God and if we'll accept him, then it's never impossible. This is Dan Owen and this is Passage Attack. I hope you have a great week.